Thank you very much. And we now move on to topical questions. And we'll start with question number one from John Finney. Uh, thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports of institutional racism in Police Scotland. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Uh, Police Scotland's evidence to the Justice Subcommittee on Policing highlights the positive action it's taking to support our race equality framework for 2016-2030. For example, the introduction of a new training and mentoring programme for ethnic minority candidates is already helping to ensure that its workforce better reflects the diversity of its communities. Over 10% of police recruits who joined Police Scotland in September 2017 came from minority ethnic backgrounds. Through an internal review of hate crime policy and procedure, Police Scotland is also seeking to improve the recognition, recording and reporting of hate crime and incidents across the country. There's also an extensive and detailed programme of training in place to support understanding of and effective response to equality and diversity issues. As Police Scotland itself acknowledges, there are areas for improvement in the way that it serves and represents minority ethnic communities, but I do not doubt its determination to do so. I will continue to receive updates on progress being made. John Finney. Um, I, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that the McPherson report was uh, seen as a very pivotal watershed moment and, and it's always been the holy grail for many to have the police admit to institutional racism. Um, what's given rise to this question today is of course is a report from the uh, Coalition for Racial Equality and Rights and the stark facts are that only 1% of officers and police staff come from a BME background. That's relatively unchanged since 2013 and the proportion of BME police officers has never risen above 1% and officers and staff continue to leave in high proportions. So, I mean, that certainly could be construed as being institutional failings. Setting aside recruitment, Cabinet Secretary, can you advise what you are doing to establish why staff leave in higher proportions and what you are doing to ensure BME staff are retained, please? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, um, the member raises an, uh, an important issue, and as I uh, outlined in my response that the Police Scotland are already taking forward work in order to recruit more individuals from the BME uh, communities and progress has been made in that and the recent intake into Police Scotland demonstrate the significant progress that they've achieved over the course of the work they've been taking forward. Part of the work that we're doing as a government is through the uh, race equality framework which sets out key priorities, uh, themed areas with uh, set goals that they must take forward in order to address issues of racial equality and that's a 15-year fr framework which will be taken forward over the next 15 years. Within that there are a number of specific goals which are set for Police Scotland to take forward, part of which has been more reflective of the communities that they uh, serve and in the Police Scotland's response to the subcommittee's call for evidence on this, they set out the actions which they are taking. So for example, the positive action uh, team has been established in order to help to support the greater recruitment of police officers into the police service. Uh, and that's helped to improve the uptake, as I mentioned in my earlier remarks. Alongside that, uh, they're also making sure that they have a mentoring programme in place. So that those individuals from BME communities who do join the police service, that they have someone who can support them once they've actually entered into the service as well. So I think it's important to recognise, I'm sure the member will want to acknowledge, is that Police Scotland are putting in place a number of different programmes uh, and initiatives in order to improve representation, but also to improve retention of those individuals from BME communities coming into the service. And that's been driven by the Race Equality Framework, which was published March last year, and sets out key objectives for Police Scotland to take forward, which they are committed to doing in the work that they've already started, they've already started on. John Finney. Again, I thank the Cabinet Secretary and of course I would applaud the, the work that's been done uh, with recruitment and the positive action. And indeed, uh, the Commission were involved in the Equality Framework, which I rightly say, Cabinet Secretary, goes to, to, uh, to 2030. And of course we've had laudable statements from senior police officers and indeed the staff associations. Um, and I note that organisational culture is part of the, 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 the training that takes place. However, ever, it's, it's evident that's not resulting always in positive action on the front line. And again, that has to be seen as an institutional failure. The coalition asked for key, four key improvements in the police service uh, that, that I'm sure you're aware of. These relate to a, a more representative, a more responsive, a more collaborative, a more accessible, and this is particularly with regard to issues of transparency police service. And they seem entirely reasonable to me. What will you do to ensure that these improvements take place, please, Cabinet Secretary? 
Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Second officer, the four key areas that have been highlighted by uh, CRER, uh, I think, are all uh, valid issues, and I know that Police Scotland are going to give active consideration to these particular matters. Um, I'm updated on the progress which they're making against the objectives that have been set out in the race equality uh, framework on a regular basis, and I'll continue to engage with them on that particular initiative. I will, of course, also be interested in the outcome from the uh, Subcommittee on Policing's uh, investigation into this issue and the report that comes from uh, the Subcommittee uh, on uh, the matter. What I can also say to the member is that uh, we've also been working with Police Scotland to help to uh, support work that they can take forward within the organisation. So, for example, uh, we provide funding support to supporting ethnic minority policing, uh, police employees through uh, 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 Simpera uh, within the organisation, which is the Scottish Police Muslim and the Scottish Police Muslim Association as well. Uh, but what the police are also doing at the present, Police Scotland are also doing at the present moment, is they're also conducting an internal review into their procedures and the way in which they uh, take forward matters relating to hate crime. And that sits very closely with the work we are doing presently in the review of hate crime legislation in Scotland as well, to make sure that we have got the right legislation in place, but also to ensure that Police Scotland have got the right type of response in the organisation as well. But alongside that, uh, Police Scotland are also providing training around uh, diversity and equality, again, which feeds out of the uh, race equality uh, framework. And as part of the race equality framework, there are regular updates on the progress that is being made. So I can assure the member about actions that are being taken, but also that we have a process in place that allows us to measure the progress that Police Scotland is making against these matters. And I'm regularly updated on the actions that they are taking. I'm determined to make sure that Police Scotland do everything possible they can in this particular area. And I'm also confident that the executive team within Police Scotland are determined to do that as well. Three more brief questions if we can. Liam Kerr. Thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary talks of recruitment uh, into the force, but none of the current executive team that uh, he mentions are from a BME background. A number of BME officers in senior roles is less than the force in general. So does the Cabinet Secretary believe that this is acceptable? And can he outline any steps that he has taken in his time in office to encourage the promotion to senior level of BME officers into Police Scotland and ensure representation at the top level? Secretary. Uh, the short answer is no, it's not acceptable. Uh, but part of the challenge has been historically in Scotland is there's been a poor, a poor approach to succession planning within the organisation to make sure individuals who could progress to senior ranks are being encouraged and supported to do so. However, the Scottish Police Authority are now taking proactive action to support that. I'm sure the member will recognise that in order to get to the senior ranks within the police service and in particular to get into the executive team, officers have to have a considerable level of experience and it will take time in order to recruit more individuals into this particular post from a BME background or from another, uh, other genders because at present time it is largely dominated by male officers with the exception of DCC Rose Fitzpatrick. So the service recognise it need to make more, act, take more action on that. I've been working with them to encourage them to do so and a key part of that is effective succession planning making sure those who have the skills and the talents within the organisation are being encouraged to do so, and the Scottish Police Authority are working with them to ensure that that type of succession planning is now being taken forward on an ongoing basis. Claire Baker. Thank you, President Officer. The Coalition do raise many uh, important concerns. Will the Cabinet Secretary commit to reviewing the way we record police incidents and regularly publish data concerning the engagement of the BME community with Police Scotland to ensure transparency and greater accountability? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, the uh, four key areas that have been highlighted by uh, CRER, I think, are all valid areas that I think uh, Police Scotland can take further action on, and they've already committed to engaging on the four points which have been highlighted. But I also would refer the member to the submission that's been made by Police Scotland to the Subcommittee on Policing, highlighting the extensive range of work they're already undertaking in this particular field. And that also has to be uh, recognised. As I mentioned, there is already an internal review within Police Scotland into both the policy and the procedures that they have around the recording and dealing with uh, hate crime uh, matters. Uh, and as I've mentioned, that sits very closely with the review that we have into hate crime legislation in Scotland. But where there are areas in which we can strengthen transparency and accountability around this area, I'm always prepared to make sure that that action is taken. And of course, we'll welcome uh, the final report from uh, the Subcommittee on Policing to consider what further measures they believe are necessary in order to help to support further progress in this particular area. And Fulton McGregor. 
Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide any detail on how much confidence the Scottish public across all sections have in their local police force? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, the confidence in policing in Scotland in general is uh, high. The most recent data which we have is from the Scottish Crime and Justice Survey, uh, which found that the majority of adults had confidence in the police force in Scotland. Uh, additional uh, developmental analysis, which was based on uh, combining data from three large household surveys, found that people from ethnic minorities reported a high level of confidence in policing within their uh, local area. So, officer, uh, overall uh, confidence in the police service in Scotland uh, remains high, but Police Scotland have also recognised that they need to take further action forward to make sure that they are engaging effectively with minority communities, and that's a key part of the developmental and improvement work that they've already started to take forward. Thank you very much. We now move to question number two, Michelle Ballantyne. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking in response to reports that Childline has recorded a record number of young people expressing suicidal thoughts in the last year. Minister Maureen Watt. Thank you, Presiding Officer. We welcome an increase in young people seeking help with suicidal thoughts. It illustrates that the stigma and discrimination long associated with mental health is decreasing and provides more opportunity to deliver the support required. We take the mental health of our young people very seriously and we want every child and young person to have appropriate access to emotional and well-being mental support. All public services who come into contact with children and young people have a role to play in supporting their mental health and well-being. We have commenced a national review of personal and social education in schools. The review includes consideration of the role of guidance and counselling in local authority schools. We've also invested additional funds in child and adolescent mental health services in recent years and are putting in an additional 150 million into mental health over five years, some of which will be used to improve prevention of mental ill health and to improve treatment in CAMS. I commend all those who volunteer as childline counsellors who are making a real difference to children and young people's lives. Michelle Ballantyne. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. ISD Scotland published a report in September about how long children and young people wait for mental health services provided by the NHS in Scotland. It found that in the quarter ending June of this year, one in five children did not begin their treatment at CAM services within the 18-week target. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, what action is the Scottish Government taking to improve this figure and to ensure that no child is allowed to slip through the net or miss out on the treatment that might save their life? Minister. Well, as the member might know, we were the first administration to introduce uh, targets for uh, waiting times for uh, CAMs, a 90% targets, 18 weeks referral uh, to treatment. And while uh, some boards are making real progress, on uh, reducing their waiting times. Um, we're not re yet seeing the consistency I would like towards meeting the targets and sustaining those targets. However, uh, the member might want to know that 29 people waited more than 53 weeks to start treatment in the, qu the second quarter of 2017, an improvement from pre the previous quarter, of, uh, which was 74 and an improvement uh, from the same quarter in 2016, where there are 151 people, young people waiting. So down to 21 from 151 in that same quarter the previous year. So we are making progress, but there is still work to do. Michelle Ballantyne. <clears throat> Thank you. And it's good to hear that some progress is being made. You mentioned in your, your first response about teachers taking on some of the workload where, in terms of helping young people with mental health issues. Can you just tell us a little bit about how you're going to train teachers to deal with this very important issue? And also, given that it's often very difficult to get teachers out of the classrooms and out of school to receive training, how are you going to schedule that in? Minister. Well, as I said in my first answer, we are, have already commenced the... Uh, the review of personal and social education in schools and I should say to the member it's not just teachers 
who are involved in this. It's everyone uh, involved in schools. Education Scotland is, for example, uh, rolling out Scotland's mental health first aid training for children and young people uh, to all local authorities. And um, some of the extra money is being used to train uh, staff within the whole uh, secondary school communities to uh, increase their confidence about approaching pupils who think they may be um, struggling with a mental health problem. <coughs> uh, uh, good examples for our uh, the uh, North Ayrshire Council, for example, who are using the Cabinet Secretary's attainment fund to fund Place to Be, which is fund, uh, participating in a research project to deliver targeted counselling services in a limited number of schools and then see what the impact is on that and see whether we should roll it out. So there is work ongoing. Anne-Marie Todd. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Like others around the chamber, I welcome the news from the Mental Welfare Commission that the number of uh, young people being treated in non-specialised wards has fallen dramatically, and I congratulate you for that. Can I ask the Scottish Government what investment it's making to increase the mental we health workforce, please? Minister. Well, as the member has pointed out, mental health is a priority for the Scottish Government, and we have shown that by our increase in investment of 150 million. And that inf investment includes 54 million to support the reduction in waiting times, including 4.6 million to his to work with boards to improve service capacity, to increase the supply and training of the workforce, and 10 million to support new ways of improving mental health in primary care and 15 million to support better access to CAMS and innovation, a great deal of work um, to uh, help improve the waiting time targets and make sure that our young pe people get the help as quickly as possible. I can thank members and that concludes topical questions. Uh, before we go, given the earlier technical difficulty with our sound system, uh, I'm minded to take a, a, a motion without notice under Rule 11.24 uh, to move decision time to 5.15. I wonder, would the Minister for Parliament uh, move such a motion? Formally moved. Thank you very much. I put the question to the Chamber that we move decision time to 5.15. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. Decision time is now 5.15. Thank you.